Hi everyone, and good evening to each and every one of you who are viewing tonight and our warm welcome to our Heritage Valley Assembly Church family here in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, and to others who are viewing from elsewhere, either far uh, or near. Colleen and I are so pleased that you could connect with us tonight for this, our sixth online half hour prayer time. Like every Tuesday evening, we are being joined behind the scenes digitally by our prayer support team made up of Brian and Melody and Matthew and Rebecca, Ruth and Jamie. And we are so thankful that they are working together with us. And each of us will be praying uh, along with them uh, further tonight and throughout the week for the prayer needs that are being shared tonight or that you may share with us uh, as this uh, presentation uh, rolls out. So again, it's good to see each and every one of you. Thank you for joining with us. As we've endeavored to do uh, every week, we like to begin with a scripture verse that will be of value to us. And last week, Colleen and I decided that before uh, we pray together here on Tuesdays, that we would like to share one psalm a week, one psalm a week, particularly psalms that that calm our fear and anxiety because a lot of folks are dealing with that. Just just today I heard that here in Canada, a nationwide survey was taken that that over 50% of us now in this nation are feeling very, very anxious uh, as a result of this COVID pandemic. 50% of our country, that's, we're about 38 million in this nation, that's a lot of folks. And so we really do need to hear from the Word of God in terms of our own lives. And so last week we shared Psalm 23, and tonight we're looking at Psalm 91. And before Colleen uh, reads it, let me just say by way of introducing it that Psalm 91 has often been referred to as the 911 call to God. Psalm 91 is 911, it's call to God. And the one that we often frequently go to when praying for God's protection and help in time of need. So it's a very appropriate psalm that we're going to be reading tonight. So Colleen, would you share with us Psalm chapter 91? I will. Psalm 91. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely he will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you make the most high your dwelling, even the Lord, who is my refuge, then no harm will befall you. No disaster will come near you, your tent, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread upon the lion and the cobra. You will trample the great lion and the serpent because he loves you, says the Lord. I will rescue him, I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. He will call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. God bless his word. Amen. It's a good word. Good word. Psalm 91. 
I encourage you to read it over for yourself and read it over a couple of times over this next week and just let it speak to your hearts and encourage you um, as we walk through this very challenging time in all of our lives. We also, just before we begin to pray for various needs, we want to say thank you to the Lord for answers to prayer. And as we hear of answers to prayer, and please, if there are answers to prayer in your lives, mm -hmm. please notify us. Mm -hmm. And if we can share them publicly, um, that'd be fantastic. It just encourages other people mm -hmm. and it encourages you as we, as we learn of what God is doing. But uh, a couple of uh, answers to prayer have come our way again since last Tuesday. And we shared a little bit from Deborah in Kenya. Uh, Deborah is one of the individuals along with her team that we as a church, Heritage Valley Assembly here in Edmonton, uh, we love to support both in prayer and financially. And um, um, she's been so really good to be able to keep in touch with us because we've notified her we're praying for her on Tuesdays along with her team and remembering them and the work. Deborah has gone into a part of Kenya, as I've shared previous, but maybe some of you haven't joined with us before, where it was just really, um, um, what's the word, rustic part of Kenya, challenging, uh, uh, deprived in some areas from what I understand, and went in and established a, uh, a medical station, school, church, and is doing just an absolutely amazing job there along with the folks that she's serving along with. And uh, Deborah shared with me an email that she sent to me this last Saturday, and I just thought I would read uh, by way of praise report. You'll also recall that her brother had been struck with COVID-19, and she talks about that and also about the need that she has particularly um, in Kenya. So just let me just by way of praise report, read what uh, Deborah has shared. Pastor Larry, thank you so much for your congregation's prayer support. We here in Kenya appreciate and are blessed by your congregation, your church's prayers. Not one word, I love what she says, not one word whispered is ignored by our Lord. Did you hear that? What a line. Not one word whispered is ignored by our Lord. For my brother, he is a miracle from our Almighty God. This is speaking of her, her uh, sibling. He was discharged from hospital to rehabilitation isolation for 14 days. He has a long way to recovery, but bless God, he is on that road. And I believe God is with him. Thanks for joining our family in prayer and remembering him. He is recovering from COVID-19. We, uh, she also mentions about their situation in Kenya. We have not been visited by the virus in Turkana, for which we bless God. However, we are praying. Uh, excuse me. We are preparing the health center and staff, as according to Kenyan a Ministry of Health policy. We are now in search for a tent to house all positive patients. CTAN has been given the, that assignment to ask Samaritan's person for one similar to those that was set up in Central Park in New York City. One week has gone by with no response. She says, we could begin to get anxious, but instead, we will trust God. God knows the need. I pray that each person at Heritage Valley Assembly family will be safe during these fragile days. God is our protector. And she quotes Psalm 91 as well. Let's pray for this hurting world. Be safe, be blessed, shalom, peace, Deborah. What a beautiful uh, report. Let's be praying tonight for that tent. Um, also, another request that just came in to us just about uh, half an hour before we, we are uh, going live. Michael in York, England, that we prayed about last week, who is a friend of one of our viewers, is now at a hospital. Uh, he was in considerable uh, uh, health uh, challenge and is now uh, out of hospital, back at home. They, he will be in a recovery mode for some time, but thank the Lord he is, he is now out of hospital and recovering at home. We praise the Lord for answered prayer. Well, now we're going to, having uh, thank God for the prayers answered, we're going to continue to bring our petitions before the Lord as we're instructed in Scripture to bring our needs before the Lord. 
And so we're going to pray for some of the needs within our church, and then we're going to kind of segue into some of the needs that are outside of our church in the community, and um, both here in Alberta and Canada and around the world. Uh, so let's let's begin to pray, shall we? I'm going to ask uh, that we uh, begin by praying for those within our church that are really uh, going through financial challenges at this time, and also those that are working in essential services that God would protect them and keep them. Father God in heaven, we bring the precious individuals of Heritage uh, Valley Assembly and those that are facing financial challenges due to this COVID pandemic either because of jobs that have been lost or laid off or a uh, combination of those um, or just a, a whole slew of other reasons for financial challenges and lots of people are in that position and we know there's folks within our church that are facing it. Lord God, you know every individual situation better than we ever could. And Lord God, we pray first of all that you will just cause them to be at rest in their hearts and not become anxious. The first tendency, obviously, when we run into these challenges financially is to be overwhelmed with worry and anxiety and wondering how are we going to make it. Lord Jesus, we just pray that you would give them peace just as Jesus spoke to his disciples in that closed room as they were sequestered and, and locked down after his resurrection and wondering what was going to happen to them. He came into their midst and spoke as seen recorded in John 20, in verses 19 and 21, peace unto you. And so we ask that Jesus, you would speak peace unto each and every one that are dealing with financial challenges. Lord God, we ask secondly that, that in, your, in your way, in, in your miraculous provision would be provided for them. That Lord God, that the challenges that they're facing that they would see the, the amazing hand of God provided for each and every one of them financially. We place them in your care, Lord, and we know that you do all things well. And we thank you and we give you praise. Also, Lord, for those within our church that are essential uh, services uh, workers, uh, either in grocery, transportation, in health care, education, uh, each are... are needing to do their job, and in some cases under stressful situations, long hours. Lord God, we just pray in your precious name, you'll continue to give them the physical strength. We pray that you'll give them the stamina and that we not become weary in well-doing. We pray that you'll help them, Lord, and that you'll protect them and watch over them as they fulfill these important roles. Uh, and we'll give you praise, and we thank you for each and every one within our congregation that are within those, those capacities of employment. We thank you for them and may your hand be upon them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And now, Heavenly Father, we pray for those that are in self-isolation in our community, in our church. Mm -hmm. Lord, the loneliness and the feeling of uh, despondency that may be coming over them. Mm -hmm. uh, and I just pray that you will be with them. We thank you that you have given to them people that are able to bring things to them, groceries and that, but mm -hmm. still not being able to be independent enough that they can purchase their own groceries is, is even challenging. And so I pray for them from the bottom of my heart. And I pray, Lord God, for those that have health issues within our community yes. and um, elsewhere as well, that you would just touch their bodies. Yes, Thank you, Father God, that yes. you are there, that you care. Mm -hmm. and. And you see their heartaches, you see their pain. And so I pray that you would just touch them from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. Mm -hmm. Lord God, there are many, many needs that have come forward to Larry and I. There are many, many unspoken requests yeah. that have come forward to us as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we lift them up to you, yes, not Lord as God. beggars, but yes, as yes. children of God yes, who Lord believe God. that you yes. will touch and you desire yes. all Jesus, the best. We pray. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Father God, we continue to remember those within our assembly that are fulfilling the very important role of pastoral telecare. And each have been assigned various names of a hundred or so uh, that are part of our assembly and 
are calling those individuals along with our pastoral staff and and leadership once a week and we thank you for every one of them lord god we're hearing wonderful reports of people becoming close friends others having great conversations others just checking up and making sure everyone is well thank you lord um for some it's it's a bit of a challenge we're, we're seeing that and they're expressing that just to be honest that mm -hmm. it isn't always easy and just being consistently connecting with people is not always uh, as easy as it looks but we thank you lord for their faithfulness we thank you for their consistency we thank you for for them just being available to uh, keep uh, caring and showing compassion and love to one another within our church. So we pray for our pastoral telecare workers and our team that you'll continue to give them a sense of perseverance and faithfulness in the task and service that you've provided them. We also pray, Lord God, for those that within our church who have volunteered and are giving of themselves so faithfully in providing online church and the five offerings that we have once a week some are seen by many and others are just directed to specific groups but it all takes a lot of work and a lot of preparation and every single individual that's involved in this is doing it as on to you lord and giving of themselves and uh, because they're wanting to serve our our assembly and our church we pray you'll bless them lord and we pray that those that view week by week uh, as we do church in this unusual way, none of us were ever prepared to do this. This is something new. We're all learning on the job. But we just pray, Lord God, that you will continue to use this, this presentation of church. That's not just for our own family, but, but for, for many that are watching, literally in this country and around the world. Thank you, Lord, for those that are giving themselves in service and volunteering for you and for the good of others. We pray you'll continue to bless them within our church. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You Amen. know, Father God, we pray for those that are in Fort McMurray and mm. are now experiencing the flooding Yes. and the challenging of that flooding. And yes. even my nephew and his wife were not even able to uh, drink the water. Mm -hmm. uh, they are not being impacted by the flood per se, but in their home but it is impacting their their water usage so god we pray for that community yes. they have been hit hard by many mm -hmm. many things mm -hmm. uh, and i just pray that you will give wisdom to the mayor and to those that serve in that community mm -hmm. and what they need to do and mm -hmm. uh, we just pray that you will be with the churches that are in that community that you will bless them mm -hmm. and that you will give them wisdom as well mm -hmm. in jesus name yes mm -hmm. lord god we continue to lift up our province of alberta as we go through this covid 19 pandemic and just as dr henshaw our chief medical officer reported today and in our province with 216 new cases of covid for a total of 4696 within our province 87 of those that are hospitalized, 20 that are in intensive care, and there are those that have passed away. We're also thankful for the 1,664 that have recovered. Thank you, Lord. We've been praying, and we thank you for what you're doing, but we know that this challenge continues to persist. We pray for our health care workers and everyone involved in caring that, Lord Jesus, your hand of provision and health Will be will be will be given to our province of alberta we were also alerted in that conference today that uh, that our first nations people within our within our province are also now being struck with this covid 19. the bears paw settlement and morley and the sucker creek just west of calgary that there's at least 15 that are now uh have been diagnosed with covid 19. we pray for our first nations people lord we pray you'll bless them and uphold them and keep them. We're also hearing of the first cases of those that are homeless in our province that have now contracted COVID-19. At least three that we know of um, in the last 24 hours. It doesn't seem like large numbers, perhaps to some, but to every one of those individuals and all of their families and all of the people that they impact, uh, it means a lot. 
And every soul is important to you, Lord. Every single one. This isn't about numbers. This is about individual people and what they're going through. And we just pray that grace of God would be provided to each and every one within our province that are suffering from COVID-19 and all those that are caring for them. We pray your provision. Continue to give wisdom to Dr. Henshaw and her team as they oversee this uh, very dramatic situation within our province. We thank you for her. We thank you for her team. And we just pray you'll continue to give them wisdom, Lord, as they're trying to balance so many things and trying to do it as wisely as they can. Lord God, we thank you for them. We are blessed to have such good leaders. And we just pray your provision to be upon their lives in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. And now, Father God, we pray for our two churches that we're praying for today, tonight, and that is for Oasis Fellowship in Grand Prairie, yes. as well as Worship Center yes. in Grand Prairie. Yes. Father God, we thank you for our northern community. Yes. And we just pray that you will bless these churches. We pray for their leadership, mm -hmm. for the challenges that they're going through, mm -hmm. leading through this uh, COVID-19 and yes. I pray that you will give every one of them strength mm -hmm. to do what you have called them to do mm -hmm. for such a time as this yes. we pray yes Lord God now we pray as well for our nation of Canada and it's become very clear this past weekend as we're learning more about COVID-19 how it has struck our country over half of the deaths that have occurred in our nation have occurred in our nursing and our senior homes, a vulnerable population of people that built this country that we thank you for. They are precious in your sight, Lord Jesus. They are the marginalized and often ones that are forgotten. But Lord, you haven't forgotten them. You haven't forgotten them. They are precious in your sight. And Lord God, we are hearing of stories where such places of Ontario and Quebec and I'm sure other parts of our nation where we've been so hard struck in our nursing homes that a lot of the staff have been, um, are worn out. People are catching the virus themselves that are trying to care for those that are in these nursing homes. In some cases, one person to 50 patients. It's impossible to be able to care for that many people. Now where the Canadian Army is being asked to go into some of these places and just help to, to change bedding and to make sure people get fed properly. And we know that this sort of is revealing a serious problem within our nation. Um, but Lord, in the meanwhile, we ask that Jesus, you would give wisdom to our governments to be able to uh, understand how they can mobilize further resources to help this very fragile sector of our population and get the resources, people and otherwise, to help our seniors. We love them, Lord. They are such a precious part of who we are in this country. We ask that not one other single senior would be in danger due to, to lack of care. And Lord Jesus, we uplift this. We don't even know how to pray specifically other than God, would you give our leaders and those that are overseeing these problems creative ideas and solutions as to care for our seniors. We thank you for, and for the families of those seniors who aren't allowed to visit them and they're worried for their moms and their dads and their grandpas and grandmas, but whether they're gonna live or die and they can't even talk to them. And the, and the stress and the fatigue is on families. We just pray that you'll bless them, Lord God. We thank you in Jesus' name. We pray for our, for our seniors in Canada today. We love them. We thank you, Lord, that you love them. M might there be a miraculous solution? Might we see even of wonderful answers in this coming week and the weeks to come in this regard? We thank you in Jesus' name. And now, Father, we continue to remember Nova Scotia. Lord, for those who are grieving, those mm -hmm. are who are seeking to understand, those that are in... in um, positions of, of responsibility. Yes. Father God, we just pray that you would just undertake for that community, continue mm -hmm. to be with them, mm -hmm. Lord Jesus, and give them your care and your provision for peace, mm -hmm. in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. And Lord, in regards to the Nova Scotia situation, we're hearing just the first reports that that gunman 
that took so many people's lives, mm -hmm. that part of the reason might have been due to some domestic issues that he was dealing with with, uh, with someone in his life. Mm -hmm. And Lord God, hearing commentators saying that what's happening in COVID-19, where there's been difficult situations and volatile situations where, where a spouse is being uh, battered, abused, that this whole situation of COVID has just aggravated it even further. Well, we prayed about this in previous weeks, but now we're starting to see some of this happen, and it's showing up on our television screens. It's not happening out of a vacuum. It's real. These circumstances are, are taking place in our households in Canada. And Lord God, we just pray protection over the households of Canada. As it were, like blood over the boat do uh, doorposts, we pray that where there is abuse, mental, physical, otherwise, Lord, of spouses or children within those homes, we pray there will be resolution that the proper authorities will come in and ensure that the protection of children and the spouses is, is, uh, is, is made uh, secure. Lord Jesus, we know that even here in the city of Edmonton that there are police officers and social workers that are working together specifically devoted to going into difficult situations and just hearing a report the other day that we thank you, Lord, for those that have been charged with this responsibility and are doing it to protect our households. Lord God, we, we in many ways, our families are broken. And this COVID-19 has just exposed the fragility of a lot of our families. But we pray for healing, Lord God, and for those that have suffered abuse, we pray that they will receive the care in agencies and some of these shelters that are still open uh, we just pray that you'll protect them and that we will do whatever we can, even as a church, to assist in whatever ways we can as well and as Christians. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord, that we can pray that peace would, would reside in our households within this nation. And we thank you in Jesus' name. And now, Father God, we pray for the great Britain. We thank you for the community there, for the nation. Mm -hmm. And we just pray that you will just continue to give wisdom Mm -hmm. guidance and direction to the leadership yes. as well. Yes, Lord. Father, we pray <clears throat> for that that great nation. Father. Yes, yes. And Lord, we pray also for the United States tonight. Mm -hmm. We just pray for leadership, mm -hmm. for the governors, for the president, mm -hmm. and all that are responsible for that great country. Yes. We pray for wisdom. Yes, and Lord. And we pray for guidance and direction. In Jesus' yes, name. God. Amen. Now, as we close our time of prayer for this week, Lord, we continue to remember our own nation. It's been a pleasure to remember New, New Zealand and Italy and the United States and Great Britain, but now we pray for our country and we pray for our Prime Minister, for his cabinet. We pray for government MPs as well as the opposition members of Parliament. Thank you that they have been working at, and, and really securing of the care of our nation and we thank you for these hard-working men and women continue to bless them and keep them we pray give them wisdom and understanding in such difficult times we pray as well for our own province uh, premier uh, kenny his cabinet and all the opposition le uh, leaders the mlas we pray that that god you will continue to use them as they continue to give direction in this very difficult time and for every province in this nation every territory we thank you for our country. Uh, Father God, we give you praise. And we, we just pray f that there will be resolution, that, this, that this, uh, this pandemic will begin to cease and desist. That, Lord God, that this illness, this pestilence, this plague that has come over the globe will begin to cease and decrease. And there would be a sense of your blessing. And even in the midst of that, Lord God, we pray that by your spirit, you'll continue to reach out to people and during this time of difficulty and continue to speak to them. And, in, and again, just remind us that, that all of us, Lord God, that, there are, that we have to continue to put our trust in the Lord. And for some, that means trust for the first time, perhaps. But we just pray that your spirit will continue to uh, walk with each and every one. Thank you now for this time we've been able to spend together in prayers at church and elsewhere and continue to keep your hand upon us. And now may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and give you peace. In Jesus' name we pray. 
Amen. Amen. Until next Tuesday, do call us, do contact us. Um, in the meanwhile, if you have prayer needs, and we will be honored to continue to pray and respond in whatever way we can. It's a pleasure to serve each and every one. God bless you and have a wonderful evening.